Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of City Skylines. My name is CityZilla, and today we are in the city of Canalville, where we are going to be working on a few things. We're going to be working on a couple interchanges, as well as adding a few little um, tricks that I like to use for my cities. And so let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so if we jump into the traffic map, we can see that we have some major issues happening. This one right here is all red, and it is a huge backup and it goes all the way back over here and then we have our new development which only has this one road and this was only placed as a placeholder because I, I really wanted to do this on its own episode and so all these cars are waiting to get off right here turn left go up here turn right turn left come all the way down here turn left and then come down here and these are all just giveaways so they're having to wait and they're not blocking the intersections and it's just really taking a long time to get over there um, over here, this is just a long overdue road overhaul. Um, and this is something that, you know, I've done some reading into city planning. And one of the most interesting things I've, ca I've came across was that most uh, road arterials are actually not planned as arterials. What happens is um, something like this happens in the city and, you know, a bunch of cars start taking one route and then the city decides that they need to upgrade the road. And so um, I definitely think that our little two lane highway up here is in need of upgrade as well as this road right here because as soon as we I was kind of playing around with this as soon as we let the floodgates go on this all these people are coming up here following this road down and then trying to get over here because for this island we only have a couple access points so this is our main access point for this side of the island we have a road going up over here which connects to this little waterfront district and then we do have a three-way interchange right here that goes into a freeway that has um, a full access point right here and it also dumps into the airport. And so there actually is pretty good access over there. The problem is, is for people coming in from over here, this is really the only way, or at least the fastest way. They could drive all the way around, but then it would just take a really long trip. This would definitely be the way I would probably take. And so the first thing I wanna do is jump into a couple of these road fixes and then we're gonna jump into a couple of the interchanges that we need to do. And, and I've done a ton of interchanges. I do all my interchanges by hand. I've done uh, trumpets, split double trumpets, um, full stack interchanges. I've done three-way interchanges like this. I've done uh, partial clover leaves. So I've done full clover leaves. And one of the cool things is I've actually driven through a bunch of these as well. And, and so one of the biggest things that I've learned from it is, so whenever you're dealing with these style interchanges, your number one enemy is braking and then having to weave. So like even this right here, these two cars go going in right here, Super easy fix. You just use uh, lane mathematics as Biffle likes to say. So you go like that and then you go like that. And what happens is it gives a dedicated lane so that these cars do not have to break. It's also one of the reasons why you want to have really large swooping ramps because you really don't want to create really short ones that have to weave really quickly. Because then it also kind of creates a dangerous scenario because even this right here, it dumps up here and then dumps right there. That's not ideal. So it would be a little bit smarter to increase this a little bit so that there was time in between these. So for these cars to be able to choose a lane because um, otherwise what happens is too many people are changing lanes it's causing backups and you end up with a scenario like this in real life and so the first thing we're going to do is address a couple of these issues so before we build out that new interchange i do want to optimize this road just because this is a collector main road coming off of here and we would really want people to be able to come down here and make it pretty quick so we're going to jump into the lane arrows hold control shift and give dedicated lanes for that. We could also upgrade this road. I don't know if that is entirely appropriate. Um, I think we do have, yeah, six lane coming down here, but then it dumps into a four lane up there. Maybe we actually could, since it is a six lane down here, kind of would make sense. So let's actually use the picker mod. We are going to grab that. We're gonna go to force elevated piece. We're going to turn on anarchy. We're going to go like this, and we are going to go ahead and go all the way down. Let's actually have, did I choose the right road? No, I didn't. So let's um, grab that, go like this. Yeah, there we go, perfect. Now we chose the right road. Okay, and so it looks like this road as a bridge piece actually turns into a four lane, which is all right. We're just gonna go ahead and leave that. Um, I don't think it is the end of the world, though we did already optimize it. You can kind of see this traffic is not backing up nearly as far. Um, another thing that we can do is come down here and let's go ahead and look at this. So if we go into traffic manager, grab this, let's just make sure that these are all good. It's a really tight area, so I'm not surprised that there are some issues. This was not designed to have this level of traffic come through here. This was only designed to have a few trucks every now and then. And so having all these cars come down is just kind of a nightmare for this area. And so another thing I want to do is prevent them from lane changing right there. That is not safe. Same with under here. If we have a node, yeah, we'll go like right there. They need to go ahead and choose their node as they get onto the ramp. 
because otherwise what happens is they try to cut people off and it's just a whole nightmare so right there they can choose their lane and so this should already help out a little bit yeah i mean a little bit we still got kind of a mess going on over here um so let's go ahead and build out that interchange so we're going to jump into roads we're going to go into highways and we need to look at a couple things first so we are going to use a three lane highway over wall i really like these roads they have a nice texture to them um they're black it's not that road it's these ones right here they're really um, accentuated with the outside lanes as well i think they just overall look a lot better than a lot of the other highway roads out there so we do need to raise this up quite a bit. I'm not going to have it go entirely over this road, just barely. And what we'll do is we'll lower that road down just a little bit. So we're going to come up here and we're going to try to find the middle. It looks like that right there. So it's about three, three squares across. So if we go right there, now what we're going to do is come out. Let's actually make sure that's on. And we want to follow that trend. So we're going to come out over here and we're going to make sure that we're right in the middle of that three. Nah, I want it to turn. Just we'll go like right there. I feel like that's good. So then we will do the same thing over here. Make sure that we stay in that middle. Follow that same kind of curve. Go all the way down. Yep here we go and the goal for this is to actually hook it up to the other side and this is really going to help out with some great accessibility over here so now what we're going to do is go ahead and use the parallel tool we are going to grab this road go all the way down if it will let me it will go like that perfect we'll come all the way down here and i'm actually going to just separate it a smidge it will go like that we're going to go ahead and hit enter fantastic and then we do need to turn this side around. So I'm going to go ahead and hold the right click and we, right mouse button. We're going to go all the way down. Fantastic. And so now what we're going to do is go ahead and lower this down just a smidge. We'll actually probably just do that middle one first. So we will lower this down, go like right there. We just want it to be a safe clearance height. And then we're going to go ahead and grab both of those and just make it into a smooth transition. We don't want it to be some crazy kind of hill. And so what we're going to do is do dual flyovers just because with a three lane interchange like this, doing partial clover leaves or even a trumpet really isn't the fastest way. Um, a lot of times trumpets really are only for areas where you need it to be in a certain position because these do, doing dual flyovers are, tend to be really big. They take up a lot of space. And so what we're going to do is jump into a two lane road and we are going to do this one on the right first. So we want to have both lanes go left. And the reason for this is because the flyovers have to go over each other. So they're stacked on top of each other. And the problem is a lot of times if you just have this one, if you just have this one go left and this one go right, the crossover happens right here. And there's just not enough space to be able to get it above or below unless your roads are already not at the same height. And so what we'll do is we will come up over here. We will have this go straight and we are going to curve it just a little bit to the right. And then we are going to curve it around. And we'll go like right here and then we will go ahead and turn off snapping because it allows you to just get a better angle on this using any of the snappings a lot of times um, just aren't the most ideal. And so we're going to go ahead and go like that and then we're going to connect it up like that. Fantastic. And then what we'll do with this one is we will do pretty much the same thing. So we're going to go ahead and turn on snapping. We're going to go straight just a smidge. We're going to go a little bit to the left and then we're going to go ahead and go like this and then turn it right. And this one, we're actually going to go just a little bit wider than that other side. So we'll go like that. Let's go ahead and turn off snapping again, just so that we can get that nice angle out of this. We will have it curve in and then have it curve back, line it up right next to that freeway and then connect it up. Go like that. Perfect. So this already looks pretty good. Now there is one thing wrong with it and they're both all on the same level. Um, this would definitely not be safe like there's walls in the middle of our freeway and all this stuff this would just be a nightmare and so what we want to do is choose one to be the first stack so we are going to grab this and we're going to bring this up just high enough to get above those lights and then we are going to grab this second one if i can come on get out of there get out of there and there we go and what we're going to do is raise this one up higher than that second one so one of the things we do need to do is go ahead and upgrade these two bridge pieces because having these walls in there would probably not be safe so I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and voila, they are raised up. And so the goal here, yeah, that actually looks pretty good. And so now, now that we have our two points, we can go into the slope mode, grab our highest point, come over here, attach that up. Perfect. 5.5 is pretty steep, but honestly, for something like this, a lot of times you do see them pretty steep. And so we will come up over here, grab this. Let's go down here. We could actually make this one the taller one since it has a little bit more space. Maybe we'll do that. So maybe we'll come up over here and we'll check this out and see what it looks like. So that's 2.2. I think I'm going to do that because I feel like this side just has a smidge more space. So we're going to go ahead and grab that. We're going to control H right there. And then we're going to grab this point 
and raise it up. Yeah, we'll go like that. Now I'm going to jump into the stunt mode and just do the same thing that I did before real quick. And perfect. So we got that down to a much better grade. And so now what we need to do is jump in here, go to a single ramp, and we are going to create the opposite side. So what we're going to do is go ahead and turn on snapping and I'm going to go to that node where it began. I'm going to go straight and what I'm going to do is come off this way. And this is how you get those great looking angles when it comes down to these huge interchanges. A lot of times, because if you do the vanilla mechanic where you have to kind of give that little bump first, it just doesn't look right. It doesn't look natural. And so we're going to go ahead and do it on this side too. turn back on snapping, go to that first node. Go straight and then come up over here, curve it, try to get it as parallel as you can. It's not easy, but it's better if you can get it uh, as close to as close as possible. So we're going to go ahead and grab this now. We will go like this, come down and then let's go ahead and connect it up right here. Perfect. And then let's go ahead and turn that around. So we're going to hold that right mouse button, go like this all the way down. Let's go ahead and do the same thing on this side. So we'll go like this, go all the way around and perfect. Nice. And so now we have a perfect little interchange going on here and we do need to work with these. And so the easiest way to do this is to move them around and see if they snap. If they don't, what happens is it's just a node issue. So you need to go into network multi-tool and actually remove a couple of these nodes and then just bring it back a little bit. And what it does is it just opens up that interchange a little bit. So yeah, there we go. Perfect. And so now what we need to do is go into node control and then also the slope tool. So let's actually do the slope one first. So we'll grab this and then we'll come up over here and just make sure it's good. It looks like it's just a little off. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Grab that, come up over here. Perfect. Nice. And then what we'll do is go into node controller and actually come in here and adjust these. So if we go in here and kind of widen this up just a smidge, so if we go all the way back there, and then what I want to do is hold alt, grab this, and then bring this all the way back. Yeah, there we go. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Go ahead and widen it up just so that we can get those lines all the way back there. And then what I'm going to do is hold alt, grab this one, and bring this one all the way back. Yeah, there we go. Nice. And so we have a pretty nice little transition in here. We do have a couple little bumps in here, though. And so what you can do is grab this, go in here. And I'm actually going to mess with the slope on this. So if we go like this, come on, go one. All we need is one. Of course, it's just a little off. So what I'm going to do is actually jump in to move it and try to shift that just a smidge. Because I think if we just move this node a little bit, it should be good. So if I grab that, let's go ahead and grab this one as well. Bring that back just a smidge. Let's go ahead and turn on snapping so we can make sure that we keep our angle right there. And you know, that's already a little bit better. There is still a slight bump in there, though, that I don't like. So we'll go ahead and jump back into node controller. What we can do, though, is turn this into nodeless. Yeah, there we go. That worked out a little bit better. I didn't realize that that was on custom. Um, it's kind of funny that um, fixed our whole problem. And so we do have a couple issues over here too. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find our lovely node if we can. And there we go. So then we will do the same thing with this one. Just grab it and then adjust that slope. So we're going to bring it the opposite direction. It looks like that was probably it right there. And then what I'm going to do is drop it down just a smidge. So right click out of no controller go like this and then bring this down Yeah, we'll go like right there yeah that looks pretty good and then we're going to come up over here and do the same thing this just looks really weird so we're going to go ahead and raise that up and then it does look like we need to adjust the slope on this as well i'm going to go ahead and get that done real quick yeah that it only needed one adjustment and then this one actually looks like it needs to go up just a bit more so if we go like right there yeah perfect so what we're looking for here is just a smooth transition. You obviously wouldn't want any crazy bumps going on in here. Um, and that's one of the hardest things to deal with in this game is this game just doesn't really uh, deal with roads that well. Um, it's kind of an, it's an old game though, so it's understandable. So we're going to raise this one up as well, get rid of that little bump. Hey, you know what? This actually looks pretty good. And so now all that's left is to give dedicated lanes. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and use a three, three lane highway for this middle section. I'm going to go all the way down and upgrade both sides and there we go and then i think i'm just going to go ahead and upgrade the rest of these into the four lanes so if i come over here yeah grab this four lane go to bridge piece i'm just going to upgrade this all the way down perfect and so now we can jump into traffic manager go into our lane connectors and then just grab these and hit Control s just to give those dedicated lanes you want to make sure these are facing the right direction too. I feel like we have a couple that are still the wrong direction. And then, so these are both coming this way. Those, that looks good. This one's going this way. It looks like this connection's a little off too. And so now we should be able to come back into traffic manager, go to the lane connectors, grab that, go like that, grab that, go like that. So we have four, 
four and two. Yeah, that's pretty good. I only kind of want it to be one. So what we're going to do is actually change that. And then I'm just going to set these up to where there's only one turn lane. I don't want there to be two turn lanes. So we will grab this and they, we can say that they can choose either or that's good. So we're going to do the same thing over here. I don't want there to be two entrances. I want there to be one. So we'll go like this. I'm just going to connect these up all the way down. And what we'll actually do here is downgrade this to a single ramp. And what we'll do is just have it go like right there. Perfect. And so we'll do the same thing here. We'll have it go one and then open up to two. That just makes it a little bit easier. And then over here, we want these to have dedicated lanes as well. Although in real life, that um, definitely wouldn't be the case. This would be kind of weird if it was like, make sure you... You know, you can only go into this lane. It, it wouldn't really, wouldn't really be like that. And so what I do want to do is also provide access to this road. And so what we're going to do is have a couple little off ramps. So we will have this one go right here. And I'm actually going to turn on snapping again so we can make sure that we follow that road. And I'm going to turn off road bending. We're going to go ahead and connect it up right there. Perfect. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. It's kind of funny whenever you're dealing the dealing with the big ones. If you have a full five stack or a full stack interchange, what that means is all roads within the area have access to the interchange. And so it's definitely something that highway engineers and civil engineers kind of think about whenever they're designing out these places is uh, you want to try to provide access as much access as you can. I do want to upgrade this to a uh, ground piece because we'll end up building something here eventually. I really like the thought of uh, building something on the other side of this island. I feel like that would be good. And so it would be nice if we could get access going the other way. I just don't really know if we're going to have enough space to be able to get something cleanly there because it would probably have to be right here in the middle. So if we had this one go up, we would have they would have to be really steep. So it would have to be steep and then connect up here and also connect up there. And so I don't feel like those other roads are going to have access right here. And that's one of the things that you can do as well. Um, it's just going to limit the access here so that it doesn't become too busy. Um, and it's something that I did in uh, Zilla Wood. We uh, had, a, had a full five stack interchange that I cut the accessibility throughout the interchange instead of having single points where it's like everybody gets on, everybody gets off. No, you... If you wanted to get off, it had to be at a certain point. If you wanted to get on, it had to be at a certain point. They weren't all together. And it actually really helped to kind of regulate traffic. And so I went ahead and connected these up as well so that we could have this way to have access and over there. So now anybody coming from this way can get off, come over here. I think it is fantastic. And so now when we unpause, a lot of these people who are coming down here and taking this road, which our traffic is already pretty much gone. Now they're going to be able to get off here and come into our new marina or if they're going to go play some golf or something. Um, without having to navigate that whole mess. I feel like it's just so much better. And so what I want to do now before we move on to our other little stops and everything that we got going on, I want to connect this up and then do another one over here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this, grab the highway, and then bring this all the way up to the highway real quick. And voila. And so I'm going to go ahead and flip this the other way around. And it's kind of funny. We're messing up a little bit of it. And there we go. Perfect. It does look like we have boats over here though. So we want to raise these up so we'll grab these let's go ahead and raise this up just enough so we'll go like right there maybe we'll even do a bridge we haven't done a bridge in a little while that could be interesting so if we grab that have it slope up and then let's go ahead and have this one slope up we'll grab that grab that have it slope up see if that goes underneath yeah it does perfect it actually just barely missed those pillars <laughs> so if we grab that go ahead and move those over just a smidge let's do the same thing on this side grab those move them over just a smidge and actually you know that works out pretty good so i'm going to go ahead and throw in a second interchange over here but we're going to do a different interchange even though those flyover ones definitely are the better especially in this scenario what i'm going to do is show you guys how to do a quick trumpet interchange um, trumpets are super easy they're really fast to throw together um, especially compared to those flyover ones. You literally just grab your road, bring it to the other side. If we can grab that snap. So we'll uh, go ahead and just go straight. Yeah, we'll go straight. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and bring it up over here. And we're going to do the same thing for this one. Bring it up over here. Go like that. Fantastic. And then what you need to do is go into your ramp, go to your freeform tool and come down here, go like right there. And this is really where the magic happens. So you want to make sure that your road is going to be angled enough. Um, the easiest way to do this obviously is with the loop mode within the, the network multi-tool. So if you grab that, grab that. And of course it's going the opposite direction. I want there to be a loop. What you can do to remedy that is just pull it out a little bit further. Yeah, come on. There you go. Perfect. And so we will try that again. Attempt number two. 
So we're gonna go like that, go like that, perfect. And so what we wanna do is actually bring that a little bit closer to the road. So I'm going to grab this and we want to turn off snapping. So we'll go ahead and go like this. Let's actually upgrade that to a ground piece too. It'll go like that, perfect. So now let's go ahead and look at that. So we'll grab that, grab that. No, that's actually pretty good. I think what I'm gonna do is have the road follow this curve. Um, if this were a flat road, it would definitely be a little bit easier. Um, but because there's a curve, I really want it to follow that curve. I don't want it to just kind of have a mind of its own. So we're going to bring this off and then we are going to have it follow, go like right there, perfect. And then now I'm gonna go into the loop mode and it's just gonna help clean it up a little bit. So if I go like that, go like that, perfect. You don't need these to be really big, but one of the biggest problems with these is they just cause people to have to break. Trumpets are actually a really common form of interchange, especially like about them in the northeast of the united states there's just a ton of these um same as the double trumpets the split double trumpets um new york has a couple of them they're just a nightmare to have to drive they're not very practical which i i think that's why they don't really make them anymore there might still be some cities that are like man let's build a trumpet so we're going to come out here and it's kind of funny um vegas actually had a trumpet for a long time and and they actually just recently uh upgraded it to where it's a flyover and so there's no more trumpet though it's funny they um provided access to one of the roads in the area by turning the trumpet like the turnaround like this into an off ramp so they did a flyover from this road that now connects up to the highway but then they turned this into an off ramp so now it connects up to a road that's like right over here it's, it was actually really smart so we'll go ahead and connect that up go like that perfect and then for some reason this one just got really weird so we're going to come up over here grab that grab that we're going to come all the way down. Oh, and it's because of the heights. I didn't even notice that. We'll grab that, grab that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And I actually like the the raised earth. Um, I think a lot of times too, they do this instead of bridges because it's less expensive. They can just kind of bring the dirt in and then um, not have to worry about it. But it also provides us an opportunity to do some fun detailing in there. So I want to now switch these around, go like that, go like that. Let's make sure that we have access over here too. So we want to switch this around all the way around. Nice. And then it does look like we're having some weird clipping over here. No, we're actually pretty good. Are we getting some weird clipping over here? A little bit, just a smidge. It's because of that hill, but you know what? I think it looks good. And so now what we need to do is go ahead and connect these up. And I'm gonna do the same thing that we did before. So we will, let's actually turn that around. So I'm going to grab our road and we are going to follow the road down and have it curve, follow that road curve just a little bit and then go ahead and connect. And then we're gonna do the same thing here. We'll grab that, have it curve up, go around, go like that, follow it down just a smidge and then connect it up. Nice, fantastic. This is already looking so good. So then we will go ahead and flip these around and there we go. And so now let's go ahead and use the slope mode and just level these out real quick. And so now we will do the same thing here that we did before. And it's kind of funny. We uh, drew on top of trees over here and I had uh, anarchy on. And so of course there are trees all over the road. So definitely be a huge oversight for our engineers. So we're going to go ahead and trim that back. And so we will come in here and let's remove any nodes that are a little too close. So it looks like that one and that one. And let's go ahead and remove that one as well. It looks like there are some nodes back here too. So let's remove that, remove that. Perfect. This should be good. It looks like there's one right there as well. Fantastic. And so now all you got to do is just kind of play around with it a little bit until it snaps in. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. And so it does look like we need to do a very similar thing that we did before. So we'll go ahead and grab this. And then we will go ahead and grab this. And then let's go into our network multi-tour, our node controller, and hit our slope just a smidge. Um, that's one of the biggest problems with these highway over roads uh, roads is um, they tend to have that weird kind of cliff that happens. You get it a lot if um, your nodes are a little too close. What we can do is actually come in here and remove that node. Yeah, there we go. And it just kind of cleans it up. So we'll go ahead and remove that one as well. Remove that one. And then we'll come down here and remove that node. And there we go. So it looks like it's cleaned up. Looks like this node is a little too close. So we'll come over here, do the same thing. Let's go ahead and remove that node. We'll remove that one. And it looks like maybe that's it. Ooh, it looks like this one. And so our trumpet is already almost done. It's looking really good. So we're gonna grab that. Let's go ahead and check out our slopes now. Of course, these uh, didn't end up the same height. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and use the slope mode to uh, grab these and just level out this one section. We'll grab that. because I want the rest to follow the terrain because um, obviously if you had a hill, it would go up just a smidge. And then our hill over here, let's make sure that this doesn't hit the pillars yeah it just crashed 
all that all those containers just uh, fell off and I don't we would definitely need some more supports over here I don't feel like that is secure but go ahead and let me know um let's maybe we'll put in a bridge I do like the bridges so maybe it's just a good opportunity to get a, a fun bridge in there I'll look on the steam workshop and and find something but let's go ahead and upgrade these to elevated pieces and voila so we have a working trumpet and so now we're going to do the same thing with our lane mathematics we're going to drop the road in the middle down to three and this would definitely be something like if this was a high volume um, interchange you wouldn't really want to lose a lane you would want to add lanes so adding lanes on either end would would be the smarter move but because this is way out in the middle of nowhere i'm going to drop it down and the reason for that is because whenever you lose lanes it tends to bottleneck people Whereas if you add lanes, um, it's just like an extra lane. It's not going to really impede anybody. And so something to think about whenever you're doing that, you always want to add a lane rather than taking lanes away. And so we're going to connect these up now, go like this, go like this, come over here, do the same thing. We'll grab this. Ooh, it looks like we need to mess with this one too. We didn't even mess with these nodes. So let's go ahead and bring these back. We'll go like that. And then I'm going to hold alt, grab that, bring this one all the way up again. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Go like this, bring these back. And I could just hold alt and bring those ones back too. But I just tend to do it this way. So I'm going to bring that all the way back too. Nice. And so now we have a interchange. And it's kind of funny. People are already using it. Especially for over here, like um, our agricultural area. Now there's just an easier way to get into the city rather than having to drive all the way over here. And so I feel like this is going to be really good access for our city. But I really like this. I think this looks fantastic. Um, we could also come in and do some trees and stuff. I think maybe I'll throw in some trees. We'll do like a small detailing time lapse at the end. And then um, same with here. I think this is definitely going to be more of an urban interchange. And so I don't know if I'm going to do any sort of uh, connect, any sort of landscaping or anything like that, just because it's raised. Um, it's, it's definitely not really uh, the type of interchange that you probably would see trees or something like that. And so now let's move on to our next problem. We are going to jump out of here, get out of node controller, and let's go check out this area. So let's see how far backed up this is now. Oh man, this is like way back here. I actually think it was back there before. Um, so now there's just a couple quick fixes. We will come into roads, go to the two unit three lane plus, and we'll go and upgrade this to a four unit road. And we're gonna go ahead and upgrade it to a four unit road all the way across here. I want that to be a bridge piece. We'll go ahead and leave that right there because I don't think too many people are coming into our university area. I think it's really just this area that the problem is. And then what we could do, because this is just a normal road, there's really no point in having this as a highway. We're going to upgrade this to a four, four lane road going all the way down to our basically an on ramp. And then let's go ahead and set this up now. So we'll come in here, go ahead and turn on give yield. And then what I'm going to do is upgrade this to a two lane road. So we're going to go to highway. We're going to go to a two lane off ramp, upgrade this going all the way back, uh, probably to like right there. And then we need to hook up this junction as well. This is something that I forgot. So we want people to continue on and then we want people to not be able to make that left turn um, because this is like an undivided highway. A lot of times it just allows you to make those weird turns and that's not something that we want to allow. So let's go ahead and hook up this slope real quick. So we're going to grab that. Perfect. Nice. And so now we have great accessibility over here. And what we want to do is set up these turn lanes. So I'm basically going to give a dedicated turn lane for this off ramp going left. And this is something that you see like slip lanes, stuff like that. Um, it just really helps to allow traffic to continue on. So we're going to tell this lane that they can choose that, that lane at all times. They don't have to stop. And then that lane has to go over here. And so this lane can literally just keep going. We'll just tell them not to stop. And so now this would function as a slip lane. So they will, they don't have to wait. And one thing we do want to prevent is people changing lanes in here. So I'm going to go ahead and control S control S. They can choose their lane right there. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and go like this. Yeah, that is fantastic. Nice. So now all of our traffic is coming this way. And so we want to optimize these as well. So I think this just functions as, as a yield because we don't have a ton of traffic coming this way. But our main problem is this junction right here. This has been a problem junction for us for quite some time. So I think this is now the time to pause and actually do a renovation. And so the city has proposed a new plan for this and what we're going to do is do a small flyover road so any people on the freeway who want to continue on actually don't have to go through the interchange 
this is something that you definitely see. So um, I really like the idea of it um, and it worked out in my test build. It, it definitely helped out a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and raise that up, go up to 92. I feel like that's too high, but we'll, we'll see. So I'm going to grab this, have it go straight and then we will have this connect up, go like that. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and check that out. Yeah, it's a little high. So I'm going to grab those nodes and bring them down just a smidge. They really don't need to be that high. And then let's go ahead and adjust that slope a little bit. So we'll grab that, come all the way down here, grab that. Perfect. And then let's do the same thing on this side. And then we will jump into a one unit, one lane road. And we're going to create a single point interchange right here. So we are going to grab that point. We will go ahead and turn off snapping and we want to come literally right next to the road. And so we'll go like this and then we're going to bring this all the way down, go straight and we don't want, we don't want it to snap. So we'll go ahead and turn off snapping and we'll bring this up like right there. Perfect. And then let's go ahead and hook up these other sides now. So we're going to grab this, come up over here, have it go parallel with that top road. Have it come all the way down, go like right there, perfect. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side real quick. And then now that we have these all out, what we're just gonna do is connect these up. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on snapping again. We'll grab that, connect it up, grab this, connect it up, and then come over here, do the same thing, grab that, connect it up, and then grab this other side and connect it up. And then what we need to do is turn these the right direction. So we'll come in here, hold that right mouse button, come all the way down, turn them the right direction. And then now we need to go into node controller and just mess with these nodes, make them a little bit better. So we're going to go ahead and bring that back. And then it looks like we have another node in there that we can get rid of. So let's go ahead and get rid of that, get rid of that. Yeah, that looks already so much better. We're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side, get rid of that node, get rid of that node, and then jump into node controller, go like this, widen that up just a smidge. Yeah, we'll go like right there. It does look like we have a node right there as well. Let's go ahead and remove that. And then, so this side's already pretty good. Yeah, this side looks great. What I do wanna do is move these other ones back just a smidge though. So I'm gonna hold all, grab that, and then bring this back just a smidge. It will go like that. I'm gonna do the same thing for this side, bring it back, corner offset, go like right there, fantastic. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, hold alt, and there we go. And then we're actually going to remove uh, crosswalks on all this, there's no crosswalks, this is like a highway. You wouldn't be walking up here. So these do not need to be there, that need, does not need to be there. Nice, and so now we have hooked it up. Let's go ahead and unpause. Let's check that out make sure that we don't have any weird like uh, bumps in here again. It looks like we got a little one in here. So if I grab that, let's go ahead and mess with that slope just a smidge. Yeah, you know, what? this looks pretty good. One of the things we do need to mess with those are the lane arrows. We don't want people making weird turns. So like coming off of here, you can only turn right. Um, coming off of here, you can only go straight. We have lights in there as well. We do not need lights. We do not want people stomping. So we're gonna go in here and just tell them to continue on. And once people figure it out, they're gonna start taking that middle lane. And so now anybody who wants to stay on the highway does not need to stop. And that's really the gold here. A lot of these cars who are still kind of mapped to go through this interchange are still going to do it. But honestly, this is going to help out our traffic so much. And honestly, that's a really easy fix that you can do for your city as well. Just kind of add one of these in, do that road over. And now your highway just doesn't have to stop. This is just the perfect little fix. And we could even add that into a highway road. I think I'm going to keep it that two lane road, though, just to make it a little bit safer. And so now what I want to do is upgrade the rest of our highway. So we are going to jump into highways. And so we have a two lane highway right now. And what we wanna do is upgrade it to a four lane. Okay, and so now we have upgraded that road. Let's go ahead and set a priority on it now. So if we grab this, I wanna make sure that we don't get into that weird. So let's go ahead and hook that up now. And we want that to have giveaways going all the way down. And then we wanna have dedicated lanes. So we're gonna come in here, go like that, perfect. We're gonna do the same thing here, go like this, fantastic. And then down here is really where our problem is. And so now all those cars got released. They're all coming down here and they're just in a nightmare of traffic. And so what we're gonna do is set up time traffic lights. I'm gonna hold control shift click, control shift click. And then we are going to stop both of these and we're gonna add these junctions together. And the reason we're gonna do this is because it is going to allow us to time both of these lights together, which is just fantastic. Um, I do want all the greens to be with each other though, whereas right now they're kind of opposite, which really wouldn't help us out. 
So I'm going to go ahead and fix this real quick and then I will be right back with you guys. All right. So now what I'm going to do is literally just jump into each step and time these up. So you see how this one's green and this one's green. What I want them to be is timed with this one. So I'm going to hit enter, come over here, go ahead and turn these into reds and then go ahead and turn this green and then turn this green. And then what we'll do is go ahead and increase this as well because this is the smaller areas. What we'll do is five and 20. And what that means is it can close as quickly as five seconds and then it can remain open as long as uh, 10 seconds, which is good. So we're gonna go ahead and do this one now. So we will hit enter, come over here, change this again, turn these red, turn these green, then turn this right green, perfect. Then we're gonna do the same thing because this is the bigger road though, what I'm gonna do is do five and then 25. And that's because we really wanna give priority to that main road. And so we're gonna now go to the last one, which should be the top yet yeah, is, so I'll come over here, go ahead and hit enter, turn these red, turn this one red, turn these green, turn this one green, and then come over here and do the same thing. So five, and because I know this is also a really busy section, we're gonna go five and 25, then we should be able to hit start now and hit unpause. Um, Cause what's happening is our uh, our national park is just, just popping right now. Everybody is going to it. And so we have a ton of traffic. Cause I think another thing we need to do is create a relief road. So right now we only have one road going in and we have a ton of stuff in here. We have a little shopping center, a bunch of hotels. So they would have to get deliveries and then all these people trying to go. I mean, it's just crazy. Um, like, look at all these people waiting. We have a bus stop right here. It's just, it's just crazy. And so then the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and add in a bus slip lane. So we will come into buses, go to a one unit bus road, and we will go to freeform. And what we're going to do is grab this road, have it come right next to it. We don't need it to be a bridge piece. We'll go like right there we'll go straight just a smidge and then we'll have it turn right there fantastic and then let's go ahead and of course i didn't have uh, i had collision off so let's upgrade that go like that perfect and then let's um just fix this a little bit so that we can get that road in there maybe if i get rid of that yeah if we go like that perfect and so now we will be able to jump into buses, go in here and move this station right there. Fantastic. That is just so good. And then what we're going to do is actually get rid of that one. We do not need one on the other side. We have a little bus lane station right here, a little mini station. And so I do want to limit access to this road. So we only want buses able to go on this road um, because it's one way I'm only going to do that entrance. There's really no point in uh, doing it anywhere else. And so now what it's going to do is prevent those buses from blocking anybody so we're going to then bring this back fantastic this already looks so much better and you can see all those people running they're like where'd the bus stop go see look at all those people those are all people that they were okay walking but they wanted to wait for the bus to go up there and it's kind of funny that actually reminds me we need to adjust the buses over here too because i think like when i first made it i didn't think this was going to be a busy line so we only have the small buses so we actually need to come in here and turn these into the super bendy buses because we have a ton of people. It ends up being like hundreds. Yeah, so like 233, 135. I mean, it's just crazy, which I guess I should have thought about. I just, I really didn't think it was going to become that busy. And so I do also want to move this out of these two junctions. So we're going to grab that, bring it up over here. And it kind of sucks. There's a lot of people who probably use that, that uh, stop. Yeah, look at all these people. They're like, where'd it go? It was right here, um, but now we have this awesome little stop over here, and I'm just going to jump into Surface Painter just a smidge, just to get that little corner. It's going to bother me if we don't. We'll go like that. I'll probably put down some benches and stuff. Just make it into a nice little area, and this is something that you can do in your cities to just help optimize those roads. Just take the stops off the roads, especially buses. Like in real life, the bus would pull out of the lane, but for some reason in this game, they tend to block the lanes quite often, and so um, it kind of becomes a pain. And so now our goal is for this to be able to handle all this traffic so let's um jump into traffic manager again and check out our time traffic lights and see how they're doing okay so these lights seem to be doing pretty good so i i did play around with them a little bit first off i had to add a step for our new uh, bus lane over here but then um, i just increased a lot of the time so our main light going down here is has a minimum of 10 seconds and a max of 25 and then i went ahead and jumped into junction restrictions and told them all to just continue on because a lot of times even with a green light the car will kind of break a little bit and that's something that we don't want them to do and so now we have the backup coming all the way down here we have a backup up here so i think we're going to add in a, a road but then we have the backup coming up over here and this whole junction right here is just a mess so what we want to do is grab our time traffic light hit control shift again grab that and then we're going to do the same thing going to stop 
and we are going to probably keep these other two lower because over here for some reason this road just isn't that busy and then we're, what we're going to do is increase this one to 6 and 30 and don't worry about this top number the 30 it will literally turn red if cars stop coming you just want it to be long enough to allow all these cars to get through and you can kind of see this whole row so now what we want to do is just wait and see if this is going to allow everybody through and I'm also going to jump into junction restrictions. Oh, it looks like it's already done. And so now we should be able to see all these cars go through. Hopefully let's wait and see. It does look like they're stopping right there for a little bit though. Now they're going through now. So we want it to fill up this whole row so that by the time this light turns green, both of these lights turn green, all these people can go. And it looks like they're kind of blocking over here. This is just a nightmare. So it looks like we are definitely backing up quite a bit. So this should allow all the cars through here now. So let's grab this one and let's see, because we may need to open this up more if it's not, because we wanted to allow this whole row of cars to go through into the national park. Okay, so after playing around with it for a while, we are finally in a position where it's running pretty good. We don't have any backups on any of them going in. We They do tend to back up when the lights are red, but honestly, we have solved most of our issues here. So adding in this, I mean, this whole thing, none of this is backed up. If we come up over here, none of this is backed up. Our new interchange is looking pretty good. Yeah, we don't have any issues. And so one of the things that I did, I did have to play around with the time traffic lights for quite a while. And so I literally linked all three of them so that this one is green when these two are green. And so you can kind of see, and I even increased the timing on them and I decreased the sensitivity so that they would remain open because what was happening is um, whenever you link up lights like this if one of your lights is dead then it will affect the flow on the other two so if you have one that's really busy and then two that are really dead it'll actually cause this one to go red a little too soon and so by decreasing the sensitivity what it does is it makes it so that all three of them pretty much stay green i could also just mess with the minimum on it because right now it's just 7 and 30. i could just make the minimum 30 and just force it to remain open for 30 seconds um, but I do want it to still close if no cars go. So say there's no cars going down this road, it'll still turn red. And so that's why I kept it the way that I did. Um, I did also adjust our tram lines because we just had so many trams coming in here. And I was like, you know what? Um, we need to adjust these. So I went ahead and deleted a bunch of just unnecessary trams that we didn't need. Um, we still do have quite a bit of tram traffic coming into here, mainly from this area. Um, we have just a ton of issues and it's kind of funny. I am wanted to switch these over. So if I do alt shift, O, I can pull up the advanced vehicle options. And what I'm going to do is go in here, go to ship cruise, and I'm actually going to increase the capacity to these to a thousand because it's a cruise ship. I feel like having only a hundred people on a cruise ship is kind of crazy, but then what it's going to do is just decrease the number of ships that we have coming in. Um, because more of these people who are kind of waiting over here in the water standing are going to be able to be be picked up. And so it's actually going to help out with this quite a bit. And it probably helps out with performance too. I would imagine it probably does. And so let's go ahead and look at our traffic now. So 81%, you can kind of see, I mean, this area is still red. It, I don't know if we're going to be able to get rid of it. It's just because the National Park is so popular. There's so many people coming up here. Um, but then over here, we got some red as well. This is, you know, the area we worked on just because so many people are coming through here, but I think that flyover street, that, that bypass street has really helped out a lot. Um, a lot of our junctions are busy too. I mean, if you come up here, these are just small streets. They're, they tend to get a lot of, a lot of cars coming through them, especially over here to our cargo terminals. So I did play around with this one too. Um, I just set this road as a priority and, and this, these were all set up as lights, but there's not really a whole lot we can do about this. It's just because the amount of cars that are coming over here, especially over here to our uh, airport terminal, um, though I think we can probably set a priority on this because I think this is probably set up as a light. We don't need it as a light. Yeah, we'll go like that. And then we're going to tell these people to just continue on. Just keep going. Just keep going. We can tell these people to go as well. And I'll probably just tell them to continue on since there really isn't anybody um, coming that way. And then that way, all these people who are trying to turn around can um, just kind of get back over there. What's well, kind of funny, I, I guess we probably could. Yeah, I'm going to tell them that they can turn around right there because then there's nobody coming this way and it's just going to save them a huge trip. So let's see if they even do it. So if we come up here, nobody yet. Oh, there we go. So we got one car, two car, perfect. And so now they're going to be able to turn around right there rather than kind of 
driving all around here aimlessly trying to find their way out. They're like, where do we go? And so I think this is really good. And one thing to take into consideration with this, um, I play without despawning. And so this little button currently no despawning hard mode. What that means is um, none of the cars will disappear. And it does mean I do regularly go through and clear traffic sometimes because you do get stuck cars, especially trams and, and buses and stuff like that. Um, but with despawning on, what happens is, um, so say you have 82 with despawning on and, you know, you have these little red zones, um, you know, you, the second you turn this off, your traffic will literally plummet to 60. And it really just helps you to see like where your, your problems are in a more realistic light. Um, like little things like this, you wouldn't ha probably have to do with despawning off because it would just delete certain cars that were, you know, in the pileup. If you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and let me know. Um. I definitely enjoy doing episodes like this. I just know a lot of times it's kind of hard, um, especially since a lot of other creators already do these. I, I don't want to, you know, bore people. And so I tend to do a lot of this stuff in between takes. Um, but if you're interested, go ahead, let me know. Maybe we'll do some more of these. All right. So I think that's it. If you guys enjoyed this episode, you will definitely enjoy the episode on your screen. And thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys on Friday.